those people who perceive us and take corrective action? Or must we continue down the same inexorable path of destruction? That's a very important question for your generation because your generation is a generation that will make that decision in terms of what is important to you and to each one of us. Now, I want you to think about something. There was a survey done in the 90s looking at the ability of eighth grade equivalent students in 22 different countries to solve so-called complex math and science problems. 22 nations. Anybody think we were number one? No. Anybody think we were at least in the top five? No. Top ten? No. Oh, come on now. You've got to have some confidence in us. But you're right. You're right. We were number 21 out of 22. And we barely beat out number 22. Now, we can do better than that, can we not? I think we can. And I want you to think about this. Our country now produces about 70,000 engineers a year. That may sound like a lot. China produces 400,000 engineers a year. And this is the technological age, the information age. So we have got to become very serious about this. Some of you need to become scientists. Some of you need to become engineers. Some people say, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at science. Anybody think they're not good at math and science? Guess what? Put your hands down because you are good at it. Every single one of you is good at math and science. I'm going to tell you why. Most people don't think reading is difficult. Why? Because you know all 26 letters of the alphabet. Now, what if you only knew 21 letters? You'd still know the vast majority. You'd say, yeah, I'm pretty literate. I know 21 out of 26 letters. The only ones you didn't know would be A, D, O, S, and T. Now, when you sat down to read, what do you think you would say every time you sat down to read? You'd say, I don't understand this. This is hard. This is for somebody who's smart. I'm not good at reading. And yet, if we went back and gave you those five letters, all of a sudden, reading is easy. Math and science are exactly the same. You have to have the reading, you have to have the building blocks because everything builds on something else. If you have the building blocks, it makes perfectly good sense. If you don't have them, as soon as you sit down, you're going to say, this is for somebody else. So your responsibility, your responsibility, not the teacher's responsibility, not your parents' responsibility, but your responsibility, Spend time making sure that you have the basic building blocks. And if you don't understand something, you need to go to your teacher and say, I do not understand this. And your teacher has an obligation to find a way to help you understand that. If that means going back for some tutorials, you go back for some tutorials. But you need to make sure, because it will make all the difference in the world in terms of what happens to you in the future. I cannot emphasize that strongly enough. You know, the other thing I want you to bear in mind is that right now in the United States of America, across the nation, we have a 30% high school dropout rate. Almost a third of people who enter high school do not finish high school. That is a disaster. And look how many people, and I'm talking about adults, walking around on the street, don't know anything. You know, I don't want to say they're stupid, but I will say they're ignorant. Mm -hmm. And this is not what America was supposed to be. Now, back in 1831, Alexis de Tocqueville, a famous French uh, philosopher, writer, and analyst, came with his delegation to the United States. Why? Because he wanted to study America. Because here was a nation barely 50 years old that was already competing on every level with all the nations of the world. And they could not imagine how that could happen. And they wanted to study our system of government. And while he was there, he said, let's look at their school system. And he was blown away when he looked at the school system. Because 
anybody finishing the second grade in America was completely literate. He could go out and find a mountain man, and they could read the newspaper, and they could discuss political things with him. He was extraordinarily impressed by that. He was also impressed by the fact that in the school systems, they taught people values. And it made such an incredible difference. And if you want to really be impressed, when you go home tonight, get on the internet, and see if you can find a fifth or sixth grade exit exam. That's what they call it. When you finish the fifth or sixth grade, you have to take an exit exam to get your certificate from the 1800s. You will be blown away with what they were expected to know. I doubt most college graduates today can pass that exam. And that's because, not because people are dumber now, but because we have allowed the standards to fall. And we have started making excuses for everybody, and we don't need to make excuses for people because people are made in the image of God, and they have these incredible brains, and there's really no reason to be sitting around thinking about what cannot be done. And the other thing I want you to, to think about, in the early days of our country, there was something known as slavery. I'm sure you all know about that. Well, it was illegal for slaves to learn how to read. Now, why do you think that was? Because they knew that if the slaves learned how to read and became educated, then they would liberate themselves and they would go on to become a very formidable force. So here we have a situation today where it's not illegal for anybody to read, for anybody to be educated, but there's some people who impose that upon themselves. I ain't gonna learn, I didn't even learn that stuff. <laughs> you know, they may as well be a slave because they made themselves into slaves. And you don't need to be doing that anymore these days. You need to change that. And you know, there's one group in our country that's particularly affected, and that's the young black males. How many of you heard it said that the young black male in America is an endangered species? How many of you heard that? Do you know why people say that? Because there are more black males in the penal system, in jail, than there are in college. Because the homicide rates for young black males, particularly in the big cities, astronomical, most likely cause of death. And that's ridiculous. And you know, anybody who's been in the educational system knows that young black males are good students, just like everybody else, in the kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. And then something funny starts happening. You get to the fourth grade, fifth grade, that peer pressure begins to kick in, want to be cool. And then they start reading that American history book. And they start reading about this great nation of ours and all the accomplishments, but they notice that there's nobody who looks like them who really contributed to the establishment of the nation. And everybody wants to know what their ancestors did. And then they say, well, maybe next year when I take world history, but they, next year they take world history, the same thing happens. And then they say, well, what did my ancestors do? And then they come home and they turn the TV on. Oh, there they are, playing basketball, baseball, football, rampant in those baggy pants, acting a fool on some sick comedy, and you begin to get a very different view of what success for you means. You know, it doesn't mean being the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, or being a nuclear physicist. But by the time they realize you're not gonna be the next Michael Jordan, or the next Puffy Daddy, you know? <laughs> it's too late. The next thing you know, up drives this big black Mercedes with tinted glass and out steps this tall guy with furs and jewels and women. Hey, wanna be like me? I can show you how to get all this stuff. Besides that, the society owes you because they sold you a bill of good. Next thing you know, you're looking at TV. You see a young guy being led away in handcuffs trying to shield his face from the cameras. You said, that looks like little Johnny. What happened? He was such a good boy. Same thing happens to little Johnnies across the country a hundred times a day. And it never had to happen. Because when little Johnny was six years old, somebody could have taken him by the hand and walked down the streets of Baltimore 
and they could have given him a blank history lesson he would have never forgotten. They could have started by pointing to his shoes and saying, you know, it was Jan Monsliger, a black man who invented the automatic shoe lasting machine, which revolutionized the shoe industry throughout the world. And then when he steps on that clean street, you tell him it was Charles Brooks, a black man who invented the street sweeper, those machines with the big brushes that come down the street. And then now that street comes one of those big refrigerated tractor trailer trucks, you tell him it was Frederick Jones, a black man who invented the refrigeration of our nation. There is no nation in the history of the world that has ever advanced when they don't know who they are and what they stand for. And we need to be proud of who we are and what we stand for, and let's make that the right thing. The K is for knowledge, which is the thing that makes you into a more valuable person. Do I have a big house? Yes. Do I have a lot of cars? Yes. I grew up in Detroit with like cars. Do I have a lot of things that rob the leads of lifestyles and the rich and famous things that are important? Yes. Are they important? No. And if they all disappear tomorrow, I don't care. You know why? Because I get them all right back almost immediately with what's up here. And that's what Solomon, the wisest man, the wisest man who ever lived, he said, gold, silver, and rubies are nice, but we treasure far above those things knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because he knew with those you get all the gold and silver rubies you want it. More important that you can understand they don't amount to a hill of beans and that the most important thing is using your God-given talents so that you elevate other people. That's what real success is about. The B is for books. Books, which is the mechanism for obtaining that knowledge. Some people say, I don't need to read books. I can learn everything I need to learn by watching DVDs and videos. That's like saying you can develop your muscles by watching somebody else lift weights. You know, it doesn't work that way. You've got to use that brain. You've got to cultivate it. The second eye is for in-depth learning, learning for the sake of knowledge and understanding, as opposed to superficial learning. Superficial learners are people who wait until there's a test, then they cram, 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 sometimes do okay, and three weeks later, know nothing. That's how we got to be number 21 out of 22. We can't afford it as a nation. We can't afford it as an individual can't afford it in your life. And the last letter, G, is for God. You know, God has become politically incorrect in our society, and I think that's a big mistake. You know, some, some lawyers came to my wife and I some years ago, and they said, you can't put your Think Big Banner up in a public school, because the G stands for God. And the First Amendment says, there could be no government support of religious expression. Well, I reminded them that the First Amendment also says there could be no government suppression of religious expression. So we had a rather vigorous argument. And I suggested that we resolve it at the level of the Supreme Court, which seems like a, a bold and reckless statement, but it wasn't because I knew the very next week I was going to the Supreme Court to receive the Jefferson Award. So I figured I would ask while I was there, and I did. And just as Sandra O'Connor said they were all wet, they had no idea what they were talking about. Of course that was not a violation. And people who say silly stuff like that, do they understand that our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, talks about certain inalienable rights given to us by our creator? Do they realize that the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag says we are one nation under God? Do they realize that most courtrooms on the wall it says, in God we trust? Every coin in our pocket, every bill in our wallet says, in God we trust? So if it's in our founding documents, it's in our pledge, it's in our courts, and it's on our money, but we're not supposed to talk about it. What in the world is that? In medicine, we call it schizophrenia. It's a form of craziness. You know, we need to make it perfectly clear that it's okay to live by godly principles of loving your fellow man, of caring about your neighbor, of developing your God-given talents to the utmost so that you become valuable to the people around you, of having values and principles that govern your life. And if you do that, not only will we remain a pinnacle nation, but we will truly have one nation under God, indivisible liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Great honor.